Welcome into this edition of Inside Bronkbuster Athletics. I'm Mike Pilosov. We're kind of rolling out the celebrity red carpet the last few weeks and keeping on the Hall of Fame path as far as Bronkbuster Athletics. And this week, we're privileged to talk with Ashley Rudy, who's the administrative assistant to the director of athletics. So we appreciate you coming on the show. Thanks for having me, Mike. I know that uh, we had to twist your arm a little bit, but we finally got it done. For, you know, knowing I've known you for a long time. Um, Garden City High School grad, Garden City Community College. You basically went to high school here, you went to college, and then you never left. So tell the story about how Bob Larson, the former AD, who we had on the show last week, and Greg Greathouse, who at the time was the head athletic trainer, he's been the assistant AD, how they coerced you to come into the position that you still currently hold. Well, about 12 and a half years ago, I originally had applied for the building secretary job over in math and science <clears throat> and I had an interview for that and they thought I was too qualified and I'd be bored and Judy Whitehill had contacted Bob Larson because Jennifer Hill had just resigned from here and I interviewed with Dennis Perryman, Greg Greathouse and Bob Larson, an informal interview and I think after that Dan Evans and Chris Finnegan, uh, the head baseball coach and the athletic trainer at the time, knew me and they said she'd be a good hire and the rest is history from and then. Everything kind of stuck after that, right? It did, it did. I know that you kind of roll your eyes when people say this, but both Greg Greathouse and Bob Larson have said it's the best hire, best move they've ever made. So when you hear them say that, I know you're humble, you just, you're very similar to Bob in that respect. What does that mean when, when people say that? I mean, it's an honor, but I'm, I just do my job and do what I can, and, but it makes me feel good that they think that, so. Okay, tell everybody where the hell Battle Mountain, Nevada is and why that's relevant. That's where I went to school when I was younger and my dad worked on a ranch there and it's close to Elko, Nevada. <clears throat> small, small town. We used to have to ride the bus for 30 minutes. People have no idea what a cattle guard is. Mm -hmm. We'd have to walk across cattle guards to get to the school bus. It's no joke. And it's in the middle of nowhere. Literally. Right. Literally, yes. I mean, that's the northern part of Nevada. Of course, mm -hmm. I grew up in Las Vegas, but... It's funny because you and I have been talking about this the last couple of days, trying to get you to remember what your time was like when you were a student here. And it's funny because what does a 19-year-old actually remember about going to college? But try and get yourself from underneath the rock that you were probably under. What do you remember about going to school here? I mean, I wasn't involved in a lot of activities. I mean, I was just a regular student, working part-time, living at home. <clears throat> but I mean, I enjoyed my time here. Did my two years and... Never went on after here because I never knew what I wanted to do and took a break, started working full time. But I mean, I enjoyed my time here and there's still some people here that were here when I went to school here. Your job title is administrative assistant. And again, we kind of joke that we, we, a lot of people call you the de facto assistant athletic director. Colin Lamb has, has called you that. Even Greg McVeigh, the director of athletics, has said it. With everything that you do that your job entails, what's the most challenging aspect of what you do on a daily basis? Besides working with me. No, not really. Um, the most challenging? There's a lot. There is. It's, you know, every day is a different, different beast. So it just kind of depends. Making everybody happy from the coaches to athletic director to people across campus. I just want to make sure everything is done right and everybody's happy and those relationships. Make sure they're good. I've said it and it, it's kind of common knowledge now, but you come from a really good family. Mom's a VP at American Ag Credit. Dad works at a feed yard. He's a manager there. Uh, your sister's a nurse. And then, of course, top it all off, your, your brother's a doctor. So how competitive was that household when you were growing up? You know, not real competitive. I mean, we all got along, but we've, we fought a lot, not going to lie. And I, like my mom always say, I'd be the one to, like, weasel my way out. I'd get in the middle of the fight, and I'd kind of back my way out. <clears throat> and my brother and sister, I mean... I say we fight, but we got along really good. We're all really close for a year, about a year and a half apart, each of us. And I mean, growing up, we had a really tight family. I mean, hardworking family. That's where we got all our values from is our parents and my grandparents. So 2008, you married Jared, Yep. who you guys obviously now 12 years it, and actually it'll be 12 years, 13 years in, in April. Yep. Coming up. Yep. So how did you guys meet? So I was, I had taken a break from school and I was working full time and a funny story he worked at the garden city recreation where he still works at <clears throat> and i was taking workout classes 
And I always joke that this guy was creeping through the window looking at me. <laughs> and he was shy, so I had seen him one night at a restaurant and we got to talking and the rest is history. The rest is history. And he is very busy, and we'll get into your kids here in a second, because he, he obviously is the director of the sports director, the director of the, the recreation center, which he's been there for what, like 15 years now, it seems like? Uh, 15 going on 16. 15, oh, unreal. So, and he's obviously an official, which we kind of make fun of him for that. Yep. About a year into your marriage, you had a health scare. That, I did. And it wasn't like a little health scare. It, this was pretty significant with your gallbladder. I did. I had gallbladder issues and I had a surgery in 2009. And during the surgery, the doctor had nicked my bile duct and almost died. And I had to get to Wichita and have all kinds of surgeries to fix that and correct it. And I was in the hospital for about three and a half weeks. And then about three or four months after that, I was back in the hospital and had to have more surgery to fix the, like the abscess and all the stuff that was in there. And it was, it was a rough go. How did that change your perspective on things? Because it was a near death experience. You know, I mean, you value life. And is, is it something to this day, because you mentioned valuing life, that you still remember pretty vivid? You try to kind of block it out. And I know you're kind of tearing up now, but the fact that, that I've known you for a long time and I just found out about this, you know, just last year. So is that something that you carry with you every day? You know, I try to keep it in the back of my head, but yeah, I mean, because that's what. And you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> made it difficult to have kids, so. That leads me into the, the best part of this whole thing are your kids. So let's start there because I call you the Energizer Bunny. And it's, it's funny because every day you're running in 12 different directions. Circles, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so whether Kane has football or karate or whatever he's doing, and then your triplets are the most rambunctious little girls I've ever seen. And I love them. That they are. That most everybody <laughs> does that's ever met them. So when do you sleep? <sighs> Well, a little bit at nighttime, that's about it. <clears throat> my nights are crazy, but when they go to sleep, I'm an old lady. I go to bed when they go to bed because they do. They keep me on my toes, and between work and them, it's, it's crazy. What do they mean to you? I, I ask everybody on this show that's come on, you know, what their kids mean, and a lot of people give the, the standard answer. You are like team mom from morning till night you, your kids are above everything else which is the way it should be and I, and I see that firsthand so in retrospect what do those four little demons mean to you and I say demons kindly dang it Mike you're gonna make me cry again uh they do mean the world because like I said it took a long time to have them and as much as they drive me crazy sometimes they mean the world to me you've worked with a, a lot of great people and great coaches and I'm not going to name everybody but you know, we've mentioned Bob Larson, Greg Greathouse, who <laughs> Greg would give a kidney to an ant. I think Bob Larson would do the same thing. Colin Lamb has been here, Ryan Ruda. And again, I'm not going to name everybody. Coaches, you've worked with Jeff Sims. Yep. You've worked with Jeff Tatum. You've worked with Bucket, Chris Ballman. When you think back of all the people that you've had a chance to work with, what, what stands out about that? I'm a people person, and <clears throat> I've built relationships with all of them. And all those people you named, plus more like Alora Sharp and everybody I still have relationships with. I still talk to them, we text, we call every now and then. Not as much as we should, but I mean, it's the relationships and people. Like if you're a good person, I mean, we all had a great working relationship and so. If you think about 13 years as an employee here, but you've been a part longer than that, what's the most memorable moment that you can think back about your time here? You know, there's, there's probably a lot. And I mean, obviously winning the national championship um, football team, that was, something cool to be a part of and you know Jeff made sure that I felt like I was a part of it and there's just so many different things like from the little things to big things like hiring coaches watching them win and succeed and even moving on to division one that's their dream so there's a lot of good things. Well, we appreciate you coming on the show. Thanks for having me Mike.